Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, maintaining a relationship with us, uh, though we realize now that it was a difficult uh, relationship and we pray that you'd help us to always value our relationship with you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen. Our text for today is found in uh, the book of Hosea, uh, chapter 4, verse 6. And I'll be reading from the message version. That's Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. It reads, My people are ruined because they don't know what's right or true. Because you've turned your back on knowledge, I've turned my back on you, priest because you refuse to recognize the revelation of God. I'm no longer recognizing your children. Our subject for today is Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best. I stated a few weeks ago that marriage is a daily opportunity to practice our relationship with God and all relationships are dependent upon our relationship with God. Close after God completed the creation of the world and mankind, he gave a standard that was to govern the relationship. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, uh, we probably have that remembered by now. It states, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The relationship will be ended. So mankind's relationship with God, which is uh, on a vertical uh, plane up and down, uh, we are reaching up to God and God is reaching down to us and our relationship with each other, which is on a lateral plane, uh, meaning that we reach out to each other. Even in dating, standards that govern the relationship must be established from the beginning. When we accept a job, we are made aware of what time to start and stop work. When, uh, when and how long breaks take. Uh, sometimes there are unwritten rules that govern our employment and our relationship. We shouldn't have to be told that we are expected to work if we are within the starting and ending times. We, should, we shouldn't go to work and don't work. If we're at work and not on break, we should be expecting to work. When a wife takes on the name of her husband, that indicates that they are attached in holy matrimony. They entered into a relationship that binds them together. Now, biblical relational vows call for the joining of two into one or oneness, one mindset. It infers like-mindedness. The Mosaic law represented the mind of God and what he needs or expects from the relationship with Israel and mankind today. While faith, grace, and mercy represents the mindset of what man uh, needs and what's best for us in the relationship. Mankind can't maintain a true relationship with God without faith, grace, and mercy. Now, there was a TV show years ago titled Father Knows Best. Perhaps some of you remember it. Long time ago. If you're under 50 years old, you probably never heard of it. And that title reminds us that God has a right to instruct and reveal to us what's best for us. 
Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. In this verse, we find uh, the way of maintaining a relationship. First of all, recognizing that we belong to God, not the way we sometimes infer it. We refer, refer to him as my God. Now that's one that's good in itself, but we need to recognize that we belong to him and not he belong to us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. The requirements, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then the relationship can be mended. If it's broken, it can be maintained. Uh, God in his sovereignty gives us a right to make our own choices, but he reserves the right to control the outcome of our choices. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 and 20, and I'm reading from the, uh, the living Bible version. It says, haven't you yet learned that your body is the home of the Holy Spirit God gave you and that he lives within you? Your own body does not belong to you. Notice that word in your own body, that's the way we normally see it, does not belong to you. Verse 20 says, for God has bought you with a great price. So use every part of your body to give glory back to God because he owns it. A lack of knowledge in the text in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 does not indicate that Knowledge has not been given, but a refusal to put to use the knowledge that God had given to them. The knowledge was given to the priest who failed to adhere to it themselves or keep Israel reminded of the knowledge of God. God gave the standards for a lively and fruitful relationship. Remember the original standard, disobedience brought death to the relationship, thou shalt surely die. The relationship will be severed. And then Jesus came along and said, the branch can't bear fruit of itself. Therefore, the branch must stay connected with the vine, and Jesus is the true vine. And so, uh, Knowledge was given to the priest who failed to adhere or keep Israel connected to their God. Uh, now, when leaders don't act right, the people will follow their lead, even into a ditch or deadly consequences. Let's take a closer look at the text. When Jeroboam I, the first Jeroboam, set up his own religious system in Israel, many of the true priests fled to Judah. So the king ordained priests of his own choosing. You can find that in 2 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Now, of course, these counterfeit priests knew neither the Lord nor his law. They were primarily interested in having an easy job that would provide them with food, clothing, and pleasure, especially opportunity to be with the shrine prostitutes. Hosea told the corrupt priest, don't blame the people for what's happening because they're only following your bad example. When you obey God's word, the knowledge of him, you walk in the light and don't stumble. 
Proverbs chapter three, verse 21 through 26 says, my sons, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be like, be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. neck. And then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fears, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. In times like the ones that we're living, a word from the Lord is essential to living with needless fear. The world, and not just one country, but all countries have, has lost many lives because of the desire to believe a lie instead of the truth. And those lies are starting from top going down. I often ask myself a lot lately, how can so many believe the lies that they are believing? I'm amazed that those that are believing the lies believe that they are living the truth or believing the truth. And likewise, they think those believing the truth are really be the ones believing the lies. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one through nine. And I recommend you reading verse uh, 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 all the way, well, one through 17. Uh, I'm reading the English Standard Version and I'm going to read verse one through nine. And I'm recommending through 17. Uh, verse 1 through 9 deals with godliness in the last days. Verse 1 says, and, and again, the English Standard Version, verse 1 says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulties. For those, pe for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God and having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sin, and lead and led astray by uh, vis various passions. Verse seven says, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janes and Jamborees opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly, their foolishness, will be plain to all, as was that of those men. Now, verse 10 through 17 deals with all scripture is breathed out uh, by God. And no, go ahead on and read those. You read those verses on your own. They are very worth reading. And Paul is talking about uh, how all scripture is breathed out by God and what it's good for. Now, when you reject the word, you walk in darkness and can't find your way, according to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Worldly 
and ignorant spiritual leaders produce worldly and ignorant people. And this brings instructions or, or destruction rather to the land. The phrase your mother in Hosea 4 and verse 5 refers to the nation of Israel. As goes spiritual leaders, so goes the church. And as go the church, so goes morality. And as goes morality, so goes the nation. God's people are both or should be both salt and light in society. According to Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 13 through 16. When they are corrupt, society becomes corrupt. God rejected Jeroboam's man-made religion and warned the priests through Isaiah that their easy jobs would soon end in disaster. Instead of seeking God's will, they consulted their idols. The more people sin, the more people, the more food the priests were eating and enjoying. The more shrines the people built, the more uh, they and the priest could indulge in lustful pleasures as they participated in the fertility rites. But the rites wouldn't accomplish anything because God would cause the population and the produce to decrease instead of increasing. And furthermore, the priest's own daughters and daughter-in-laws would become shrine prostitutes and commit adultery. Their sin would bring judgment to their families and the land. And there are times when the best way God can help mankind is to allow him to self-destruct. And then there are times when uh, turning from our wicked ways and seeking God's face, then we will uh, see God sending a deliverer, just as he did one Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He sent his son to die in our place. He died. And he, he died so that by becoming what we were, sinners, so that we could become what he was, the righteousness of God. And the story doesn't end there. Because early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. He rose from the dead with all power. Power to, 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 to reach down to us and pull us up. Power to, to bring uh, enemies together. Power to mend broken hearts. Power to restore broken relationships. I've got to leave you now. I'm out of time. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to always remember and realize that you truly do know what's best for us. Help us to always seek uh, a stronger, knowledgeable relationship with you so that we can not only be uh, right with you, but we can... Uh, men broken relationships with our fellow man. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today and remember the father knows best. See you next time. Bye-bye.